come to the course corrosion failures and analysis. We have say lecture 15 and the topic will be de-alloying or selective leaching. Now, uh, as the name suggests that uh, uh, it is just uh, opposite of the alloying. In case of alloying, what we do? We mix a number of elements and then make solution of it. Okay? So, that is alloying and de alloying, we are actually taking element out of an alloy. Okay? So, that time it becomes de alloying. Selective leaching is also like selectively taking one element from an alloy and then that, that element goes to the solution. And But here uh, one thing is important in case of alloying, uh, we can do it via casting route, we can do it via electro deposition route, but in this case specifically it is done via electrochemical route. So, that means out of let us say A and B that is that are, that, that are two elements present in an alloy we are taking A element out preferentially leaving B element, so that uh, the alloy become enriched with B uh, and uh, depleted with A. So, that happens in an electrolyte medium. So, that part we will be looking at. Now, the de-alloying is basically uh, in many books it has been written as de -jinkification, uh, denickelification. So, those kind of names are given, but the general uh, name is de-alloying or selective leaching. So, this de is specific to copper zinc alloy system. Okay. So, denickelification is specific to copper nickel alloy system. So, those are the special name given to this. Here also de is basically taking zinc out from copper uh, zinc alloy. Okay. So, let us look at uh, uh, what are the basic traits of de alloying and uh, we will also try to understand uh, some of the examples as well as try to understand theory and um, then we will try to look at uh, the protections. Now, uh, let us say if it is uh, uh, for example, example 1, let us say it is. Uh, um, boiler tube, which is made of copper zinc alloy. Fine. So, now that tube if we take a small sections out of it, so small segment out of it, it will uh, look like a a small segment. So, uh, inner part This is the, the thickness of the pipe, this is black portion and let us say this is the inner part and this is the outer part. Okay. A small segment uh, here hot water, it carries hot water and outside is inner wall and outer wall is hot gas. It is basically a heat exchanger. Fine. 
now uh, it can be noticed that inner part this inner part uh, notice or observation from a prolonged operation uh, inner wall enriched with almost pure copper and of course, if it is a pure copper corrosion resistance improves. So, that means, uh, uh, if it is a brass 70 30 brass that means, 70 percent weight percent copper and 30 weight percent zinc. Uh, then what happens? Uh, the inner wall, the copper content, this inner wall copper content might reach to even 99 percent. Okay. So, this is I am just taking that 70 30, it could be uh, 60 for 40 also. So, uh, depending on the uh, requirement, but it is a brass. Now, 99 percent and it has enriched from 70 percent copper and the wall zinc content might reach to less than 1 percent and that has decreased from 30 percent zinc if we consider this. Now, this is, but outside wall uh, nothing happens yes there will be tarnishing or oxidation, but that such situation does not arise because it happens because it carries hot water. Now, if we see uh, this situation that enrichment of copper happens. So, that is what this is a typical example and depletion of zinc happens. So, that is what it is given a name de zincification. De zincification and this is basically related to deplete, depletion of zinc. And interestingly here this de zincification happens over the across the entire inner wall. So, inner wall it would become red colored because the copper has a red color from a, a bit of orange color what is there for copper zinc alloy. Now, this we can put a red tint here rather let us put it will not be like a, a, a red colored okay, because of the copper pure copper, but if we analyze this inner wall this inner wall further analyze the inner wall further we will see that this inner wall actually though its corrosion resistance has improved it is porous. Second thing is it is porous, it is flocculated and if we do a mechanical property its strength also would reduce, strength also would reduce and interestingly if we look at very carefully it is interconnected porosity, interconnected pores. So, now uh, sometimes there could be possibility that this particular thing and interestingly if we see that this is happening over the entire inner wall and it is more or less uniform. So, that is what uh, we can say that is another observation uniform 
nature of dejinkification. So, this is one such example that copper enriches and zinc depletes and that is what we give the name of de-zincification. Now, it might happen that another observation that inner wall it becomes slow flocculated and porous the wall thickness can also reduce. Why? Because of the pressure of the hot water that might lead to uh, re re blowing this particular porous flocculated layer might get blown away and we can get uh, wall thickness reduction. Okay. So, and now question is let us say it is uh, one place some local places wall thickness has reduced. So, there again this particular phenomena would happen and so likely there could be a kind of leakage. Okay, so, that is also possible. Now, see this reduction of zinc or the depletion of zinc happens after that analysis has been done and then it was realized that this de-zincification de happens due to electrochemical dissolution of zinc. Okay. and that to preference or I would say preferential dissolution preferential electrochemical dissolution and copper oops sorry dissolution. So, here uh, leaving copper behind. So, that means, copper does not go to solution. Does not go to solution fine. Now, question is we have to look at why this thing happens. that part that part tells us the mechanism of in order to know that we have to understand the mechanism of the alloy. Now, interesting part is here we could see that this wall this dejinkification is happening over the entire wall, but some cases it might happen locally okay. locally it might happen and that case we call it as a plug type dialloy. Okay. So, that means there are two variants or dejinkification one is uniform another one is plug type in fact plug type it would be uh, more Deter, uh, more uh, deteriorating uh, kind of uh, uh, is a basically oast compared to these two uh, variants, because plug type happens locally. For example, if we have one particular brass, so that time if it happens uniformly over the entire brass section, so the, here let us say the copper content has enriched, zinc content has because the zinc dissolves into the solution. But plug type happens locally like this. So, here local cases we have this plug type. So, this generally plug type happens wherever there is a stagnant solution. So, this is stagnant solution that plug type things can happen or let us say there is some kind of a, a, let us say a, a, a kind of object that is falling on that particular uh, Mm, brass wall and if it is stagnant. So, there could be possible that the crevice starts and that crevice corrosion would lead to a plug type 
degenkification okay so these are the two variations of degenkification so in fact we can say that this is the two variations of dealloying also so one is localized one is over the entire surface another one is very much localized okay and localized is bad because uh, uh, you know uh, uh, a very local point since this degenkification is taking place so that can might uh, progress in a local mode and there could be possibility that if it is a pipe then it can uh, leak or if it is a wall uh, containing some fluid which is stagnant so that can also leak so that's what uh, this is uh, a bad type of uh, dealloying plug type okay now coming to the mechanism part which is the most uh, fascinating so people have studied this mechanism of dealloying okay before that let us show uh, one example of plug type uh, this example uh, if you go to fontana and green brook corrosion engineering in that book you will find this example okay this for the example i have i have uh, we have just discussed now another example i just would like to go to net remember this is the website you can uh, go through and then have a look at that uh, uh, picture of dialloy uh, which is a plug type so here is one classic example of plug type so this is uh, 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 a brass condenser tube uh, in a internal surface of the brass condenser tube uh, that's extreme porosity of the copper plug so this is basically copper plug why they are saying copper plug because here uh, in this particular case uh, those are mostly copper porous copper because zinc has gone out of it and that's what those are called copper plug and it's not uniform it is localized so that's what uh, this is uh, 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 a plug type okay so this is a plug type example uh, and this is taken from uh, national association of corrosion engineers corrosion this paper uh, by h m hero so in that from that paper this picture has been taken uh, but if you want uh, uh, ready reference to so this particular website you can go and then have a look at it okay so this is entirely uh, for uh, educator education purpose teaching purpose fine now uh, coming to the process uh, coming to that particular window where we are uh, looking at the mechanism now there are different schools of thoughts uh, one is people say that uh, zinc dissolves but copper stays back okay and another group says that zinc and copper dissolves and then copper ion redeposits back redeposits back now uh, there are uh, the mostly people believe in that okay and in fact there are other uh, mechanism that when the pores are forming i'll come to that pores you will see later on i have some pictures we have done uh, considerable work in dealloying of copper zinc system uh, zinc copper system as well as silver copper system i'll show some pictures and there people have also talked about surface diffusion of uh, elements uh, and then accordingly that porous network forms fine now question is interesting part is both the both the cases we don't go into the uh, what is the actual mechanism but if you see interesting part the both the cases the element which is active that dissolves in this case copper doesn't go out zinc goes out but in this case both goes out both go out first then copper plus plus deposits back so it talks about 
active and both the cases its active species or active element dissolves fine active element dissolves in this case the noble element the first case noble part noble element among copper and zinc which is copper does not dissolve, but in this case both dissolves, but since copper plus plus has higher reduction ability ability. So, that is what it redeposits back and zinc plus plus stays back. In solution. Now, this dissolution is in the form of ions. So, that is what it is electrochemistry that is involved. So, it is a elect it is an electrochemical dissolution, and in the second case, it is basically electrochemical deposition or we can say cementation. Fine. Okay. So, now question is uh, people thought that this particular mechanism may not be true because if let us say this is a wall and let us say zinc goes out. So, there is a small uh, uh, pore is forming a small vacant space is forming. So, that is of the order of one zinc element size atom size. Now, if it, it has to do that way then uh, the so there is a small pore the liquid has to also enter. So, this is zinc plus plus and liquid has to enter in order to have a have an electrochemical contact with the body. Okay. Then people thought that let us uh, 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 there could be possibility that zinc continuously diffuses out. Okay. So, this diffusion why diffusion happens because let us say on the first layer or some second layer we have zinc depletion zinc ion is going out. So, that there will be depleted zinc zone So, now we have a concentration gradient. So, these two layers if I see so this is zinc concentration or zinc concentration or zinc concentration as a function of distance so, the zinc can diffuse out and then this process will continue. Now, this de-zincification happens very quickly. Okay. We have some data copper zinc if we see it happens very quickly, but at room temperature even. Now, at room temperature in order to maintain that supply of zinc for the dissolution to happen that diffusion process cannot meet that particular migration speed the way de-zincification happen over different layers. Okay. So, that migration rate is very slow compared to the de-zincification rate. So, that gives a suspect that first mechanism may not be true. Okay. At the same time there will be a small capillary that is forming that uh, pressure capillary pressure that it forms the liquid may not enter. Okay. So, there would be difficulty in uh, having those liquids enter entering into the uh, body for electrochemical contacts. Fine. So, those are the two reasons the reasons that uh, this first mechanism may not be true, but that is what second mechanism has been thought that it is working. Okay. Now, it is not it is a basically a macroscopically this is fine, but microscopically if we, if we go we will see that when this degeneration happens there is a pore formation. Okay. So, this pores forms this pores uh, uh, forms for pores are formed because of the degeneration and those ligaments are nothing but the copper ligament fine similar situation can happen in case of silver zinc is a zinc system okay so there also zinc goes out and ag pore is formed E g ligaments are forming 
Okay. So, now let us see uh, one such picture. Okay. So, if we remove that, so let us go to this PPT. Uh, this is one particular uh, example I would like to show you. This is a paper from this is a this, this particular paper if you look at you will see these pictures. This is uh, the work uh, of our group. What we have done? Uh, we have uh, mm, this uh, silver zinc uh, alloy we have prepared okay. and those we have prepared via ball milling. So, alloy preparation is ball milling. So, it is so we have mixed silver and um, uh, uh, zinc and here it is 50 50. So, that means, it is a 50 weight percent this is A G 50 weight percent and silver zinc 50 weight percent. Now, after that that powder we had taken and put it in two normal HCl, this is highly acidic condition and in the two normal acid, acid and after maybe after maybe after 18 hours after 18 hours uh, we had taken it out we had taken it out those powders we had taken it out and then we have see it through uh, ACM micro ACM, ACM uh, by scanning electron microscope okay and we could see that uh, uh, from 50 percent zinc the entire particle those particles are submicron size particle okay so it's a basic, uh, 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 around not submicron micron size it's a basically around 10 micron uh, average particle size each particle if we look at we'll see that this kind of network is forming this kind of network is forming and if you again zoom it we'll see this kind of network and if you see this network so these are the black spots are this basically these are basically uh, pores these are pores fine and if you see the ligament so this is basically ligament and this ligament it's pure silver okay and interestingly the entire particle has become pure silver 100% silver and that we have confirmed by uh, eds uh, okay so uh, and that eds in acm we have a facility called eds that eds can tell me what is the composition of that particular region where i am taking the sim, uh, signal signals so, this is 100 percent silver. So, this is typically a porous nano porous nano porous silver. Why nano porous? If you see the pore size, if you see the pore size, so this is a small pore size and that pore size if I see the dimension it will be close to around less than 100 nanometer. So, this will come around less than 100 nanometer ok fine. So, this that means here also dejinctification happen here also dejinctification happen but here dejinctification it is not specific to copper zinc it's basically in silver zinc so and in case of silver and zinc silver is highly highly noble noble and zinc highly active And due to that, silver stays back, zinc dissolves. But this silver actually does not stay back, it actually dissolves first and then redeposits back. So, that we have seen the solution we have analyzed. After the dejinctification, the initial time, for example, when we dip this powder into this solution, which is 0.004 molar AgNO3, also we have added. But even if we do not add AgNO3, so in one experiment we have done that AgNO3 was not added, only it, it was done in two normal HCl. That time that silver content was not 100 percent, it was less than around close to 96 percent we could get 96 to 98 percent we got we could get. And the solution in the beginning of dealing we took the solution and we analyzed it and we saw silver ion, okay, good amount of silver ion. But as the time progresses, we saw the silver content, silver iron content in that solution has decreased 
and zinc content has gone up and in fact actually the silver has de deposited deposited back on the surface and that actually forms this nice network of porous body and those ligaments of silver has formed. So, this is typical example of uh, uh, de-zincification okay. and similar situation if you look at copper zinc system same situation would appear that there will be a nanoporous copper formation. Okay. So, so, this is one such example I wanted to show you that in fact, it is not about silver stays back zinc dissolves only initially both dissolves and then silver de deposits back, but there could be possible that the first two layer one or two layer zinc can preferentially dissolve leaving the silver inside that is also possible. So, I would say if I go back to this particular mechanism, if I go back to this particular mechanism. So, this would be predominant and this might also happen for the first few moments of dealloying, but later on the second part will be predominant. Okay. So, let us stop here, we will continue uh, dealloying discussion. I will look at the mechanism part or the science part of it uh, in our next lecture. Thank you.